Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to be digging into DNS. What is it? What does it do? How does it work? And why is it necessary? This will be the first in a series of core educational videos covering basic networking concepts that you should understand if you're planning to build a smart home. Hi, I'm Jeff with Fast How To. Well, for now anyway, I'm thinking about changing the name of the channel, but I haven't come up with anything good just yet. So if you've got a good idea, let me know in the comments, will you? If I use your idea, I'll send out some cool smart home gear to you. Thanks. Also, a bit of housekeeping. I really encourage you to stick around and watch the entire video, especially if you're planning to comment on it. Otherwise, I'll know you didn't watch the whole thing and I'll make fun of you like I did to the people that made foolish comments on the Rat GDO video. Okay? Okay. So, DNS. The hell is DNS? DNS is the domain name system. According to Wikipedia, it is a hierarchical and distributed name service that provides a naming system for computers, services, and other resources on the internet or other IP-based networks. That's accurate enough. We'll go with that. For the hardcore nerds out there, DNS was first defined in November 1983 by Paul Makapetris in RFC 882. However, that has since been obsoleted, and if you want to read the latest one, that would be RFC 1034, dated November 1987, also by Paul Makapetris. Now that we've got the extra nerdy stuff out of the way, let's start at the beginning. Why do we need DNS? In a nutshell, we need DNS because humans are lazy, and have really bad memories. See, computers communicate using IP addresses and protocols, not names. When one computer wants to communicate with another one, it creates a packet and puts it on the wire. The IP portion of TCP IP is responsible for routing that packet where it needs to go. Without getting way down into the weeds on IP, that'll be a different video, a packet contains the IP address of the computer sending the information and the IP address of the computer that the information is being sent to. Think of it like the address is on a letter. Your computer's IP address would go in the top left corner of the envelope as the return address, and the destination IP address would go in the middle of the envelope. Okay, easy, right? So what does DNS do for us? Well, what if every time you wanted to search for something on the internet, and you had to enter HTTP colon whack whack 172.217.1.110 into your browser? Do you know where that takes you? Of course not. It's just a bunch of numbers, right? Enter DNS. When you enter HTTPS colon whack whack google.com into your browser bar, your computer makes a request to a DNS server to look up the IP address of google.com. The DNS server responds and says it's 172.217.1.110. Now your computer knows the address for google.com and it can properly address the letter. There's a whole bunch of other magic that takes place to connect the network at your house to the greater internet and make sure that your letter actually reaches google.com, but we'll save that for later. For now, just think of it like the postal service. All you need to know is that you put the right address on the envelope and the postal service gets it there for you, right? Most of the time. You don't put a whole lot of thought into what goes on in between. The various trucks and airplanes and sorting facilities and all the rest of that shit, right? You just know that it works. That's how we're going to think of the internet in this video. It's just a whole bunch of stuff between you and Google that just works. Okay, cool. So now we know what DNS does, right? It takes a friendly name like google.com and converts it to something that computers can understand and use to direct your network traffic to the correct recipient, and then they can get the response back to you. So how does DNS do this? Let's head over to the desk and take a look at a DNS server. All right, so here we are. Let's see how good of a job I can do at explaining this to you guys without having a whole bunch of stuff all scripted out, right? So to start off with, uh, well, I guess we'll start with the whiskey. I've got some IW Harper 15 in the glass, if anybody cares about that. But to get started with the technical stuff, uh, I stood up a server in Azure, which you need to just sign up for the free subscription. You get you know, 150 bucks of, uh, of trial money to, to play with. So I stood up a server in Azure and configure DNS on it and set that all up so that I can show it to you guys for this video. So the domain that I created is called FHT.com and it just exists on this DNS server here, but let's take a look. 
All right, so here's our FHT.com domain. And this is the name of the server that's in there, FHT-DC1.FHT.com. And this is the IP address for it out in Azure, right? So what does this tell us? What, what can we do with this? Well, let, let's go back to the definition of DNS, right? DNS is a hierarchical system, right? So starting at the top, we've got what are called our TLDs or top level domains, right? So in this one, I chose .com, but you've got .net, .org, all kinds of them, right? Then underneath that, you've got your domain name. In this case, I used FHT. And again, this isn't registered. I'm just using this for demonstration purposes. But that portion of this is FHT, right? So wouldn't that make FHT-DC1? Dot FHT.com, wouldn't that make this FHTDC1 be a subdomain, right? Because that's what everybody talks about on the forum, and that's why I'm making this video. Oh, if you want to put your home assistant server on the internet, you need to go and get yourself a, a subdomain. Nonsense. That's not what a subdomain is. Stop it. Stop using wrong words. Let's take a look. So I'll just create another domain, and we're going to call this new domain. YouTubedemo.org. So here we go. Here is YouTubedemo.org. All right, so let's try and go look that up. So if we look up YouTubedemo.org, there's no IP address, so we can't get there, right? But now if we look up FHT.com, there's an IP address. So how is that? Well, FHT.com has a same as parent folder entry, right? Now, if you go and create this on GoDaddy or something like that, uh, instead of being called same as parent, uh, they will a lot of times use the at symbol or capital two. Uh, so you can create a record that will resolve this domain name to an IP address. But that's still an A record, right? But so isn't that confusing then where you could have my host dot duckdns.org, right? Wouldn't that make my host, couldn't that be a subdomain? Well, no, because the way that we figure out if something is a domain or not is if it has NS entries. So let's go into NS lookup and we'll say set type equals NS. And now let's look up NS records for youtubedemo.org. Okay, so here's our name server, fht-dc1.fht.com. And then here's the IP address for that server so that your computer can contact that server and look up IP addresses for anything in the youtubedemo.org domain. Well, what's in there? Right now, nothing, but let's create a few. Let's create test one. And we'll create test two. Okay, so now we'll say NS lookup test one dot YouTube demo.org. And we get back an IP address because that's an A record. And then if we say NS lookup test two dot YouTube demo.org we get back a different IP address because that's also an A record. But now if we say, show me set type equal NS, and then show me the name server entries for the subdomain test one dot YouTube demo dot org. We don't get back any name server entries. Right? Not like if we do YouTubeDemo.org. This is what you expect to get back if you're looking at a domain. This is not a domain. If we look up FHT.com, here are the name servers for FHT.com. If we look up Google, here are the name servers for Google, and here are their IP addresses. 
If we look up duckdns.org, here are all the name servers for duckdns.org. If you're looking at a host name, there'll never be name servers listed. So support.microsoft.com. No name servers listed. Thus, support.microsoft.com is not a subdomain. But if we say set type equals A, and then we look up studio.youtube.com, we'll give you an example of a subdomain. This comes back actually as a C name or a canonical name, which is just an alias. Not important for the topic of this video, but we can dig into that and advance DNS concepts. So studio.youtube.com actually gets pointed to youtube-ui.l.google.com. Okay, so we're still set to type A record, right? So let's look that up. So youtube-ui.l.google.com. Okay. So that is not an alias, that's an A record. Well, many A records, but so let's see though, is that a domain? So set type equal NS and then youtube-ui.l.google.com. No, we did not get back a list of name servers. But what about this l.google.com? Maybe that's a subdomain, right? But let's check that out. So l google.com what do you know that is a subdomain because it has name servers so we can create a subdomain over here underneath our youtube demo.org this will be a new zone and we're going to call this subdomain youtube demo.org Okay, see, so now we've got our top level domain, which is .org. We've got our domain name, which is youtubedemo.org. And then this is our subdomain, which I very creatively named subdomain. And you can see that the only things in here are NS and the start of authority. But, so if we say subdomain.youtubedemo.org, we get back our name server entry. There we go. So hopefully this helps you understand the difference between a host record or an A record and what an actual subdomain is, right? So when you're going and you're registering something on DuckDNS, you're not registering a subdomain. If it was a subdomain, you'd be able to add a whole bunch of different things underneath that, and it would be myhost.myhomeassistant.duckdns.org, right? It's not. All you're doing is you're getting an A record under duckdns.org. That is not a subdomain, that is a host. So now hopefully the next time that you see someone improperly using subdomain, you can point them back at this video and they can watch and they can learn the difference between a subdomain and a host record. Hopefully you found this video informative and I accomplished my goal of teaching you all about DNS and why you should stop referring to host names as subdomains. It's just not right, and you wanna be right, right? In any event, if you'd like to help support the channel, swing on by my Patreon. Patrons get all sorts of exclusive benefits, beginning as little as three bucks US per month. Hit this QR code here, or click the link in the description. If you enjoyed learning about DNS, don't forget to whack that subscribe button so that you don't miss any of the future videos in this series, such as IP addressing, VLANs, and all sorts of other technical topics that'll help make your smart home a better smart home. If you like this episode's t-shirt, and let's be honest, who doesn't love bacon? There's a link to that in the description, as well as links to all my smart home gear and studio equipment that I use to make these videos for you. So if you're interested in any of that, take a look. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making it. And until next time, go automate something, will ya?